Hi, and welcome back to Scotty's Tech.info. I'm Scotty with my co-host Cletus. And in the news, you may have heard recently that the FCC came out and reassured all of us that uh, 5G is totally safe for everyone. Now, um, this is actually pretty humorous because I have a couple quotes here from the FCC and the FDA, and the FCC says, quote, the FCC sets radio frequency limits in close consultation with the FDA and other health agencies. After a thorough review of the record and consultation with these agencies, we find it appropriate to maintain the existing radio frequency limits, which are among the most stringent in the world for cell phones. So of course the FCC says, yeah, yeah, we reviewed everything. Uh, we have these limits that are from way back in, you know, like the nineties and uh, it's mostly about like power levels and stuff. We did some tests. We reviewed it later. Yeah, yeah, everything's fine. And of course they say, well, yeah, we also consulted the FDA because the FDA is involved for like health reasons or something. Uh, so the FDA also released a statement, which is, quote, the available scientific evidence to date does not support adverse health effects in humans due to exposures at or under the current limits. And no changes to the current standards are warranted at this time. Okay, so the FCC says, yeah, yeah, we consulted everyone, including the FDA. Everything's fine. Don't worry about it. 5G, totally safe. Okay, and um, the FDA and the FCC, they both say that there are no adverse health effects to the radio waves that come from 3G, 4G, 5G, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, uh, and so on and so forth. To which I would say, oh, really? Because... Um, as I've mentioned before, you can go on the internet. I'll put a bunch of links down in the description. You can hop on the internet and you can do a simple search and you will find literally thousands of studies on different types of radio waves, different frequencies, you know, digital, analog, pulsed, non-pulsed, different types of modulations, uh, various experiments that have been done. Um, many of them have been reproduced, uh, oftentimes in other countries, so there's no conflict of interest and blah, blah, blah. And uh, all these thousands of studies indicate that, yes, there are potential uh, radio waves of different frequencies will potentially cause harm to the human organism, to the human body. So I went again, you know, after reading this, the FCC and the FDA said, ah, there's nothing to worry about. So I went and I looked again, and very quickly I found three more studies that I'd never heard of before. Uh, for example, in 1992, there was a study that was done it showed that pulsed 2.4 gigahertz waves, 2.4 gigahertz is like Bluetooth and Wi-Fi in particular, uh, also cordless phones, uh, they also use 2.4 gigahertz most of the time. Uh, 1992 study showed that pulsed 2.4 gigahertz waves at four times lower than the safe power limits, the limits that the FCC says are safe, pulsed 2.4 gigahertz waves four times lower than the safe limit were found to statistically increase malignant tumors in rats. In 2002, on the NIH, the National Institutes of Health, U.S. government organization, U.S. government website, their scientific study published there, 2002 study published on NIH.gov showed that pulsed 900 megahertz radio waves altered the blood flow in human brains and altered sleep patterns. Non-pulsed 900 megahertz radio waves did not have the same effect. And again, this is something that Many people have talked about, I've mentioned it in previous videos, Dr. Martin Paul talks about it a lot, that it is the pulsed nature of all of these wireless technologies that seems to have the most uh, negative effects on the human body. That was in 2002, NIH.gov. You can go look it up. I'll link to it in the description. In 2010, another study, also on the NIH.gov website, 2010, another study says at 50 gigahertz, Radio waves 2,000 times lower than the safe limit were found to weaken DNA of lab rats and decrease sperm count in male rats. This is 2010, they were testing, it's, that's nine years ago, they were testing 50 gigahertz radio waves, which 50 gigahertz is, of course, in the millimeter wave, millimeter wave territory, at power limits 2,000 times lower than what the FCC says is perfectly safe. And it weakened the DNA and decreased sperm counts in lab rats. Okay, so keep in mind here that um, the FCC standards, where they say such and such a power level, these standards are from 1997. 
Um, to put that into perspective, in 1997, I was living in a fairly large city in the United States. Uh, I was at university working on my undergraduate degree in electrical engineering. And at that time, I'm pretty sure I had a, I think it was like a StarTac 3000 Motorola cellular phone, and it was the 900 megahertz, I think, analog system, amps. At that time, you really didn't even have, uh, I think maybe digital systems were just starting at that time, but you certainly didn't have, back in 1997, the types of, uh, well, you know, you didn't have Wi-Fi, you didn't have Bluetooth, you didn't have, uh, you know, heck, you didn't have like, you know, 2G, 3G, 4G, and you certainly didn't have 5G. Uh, the frequencies in use were different. They weren't even digital systems, they were analog systems in use. And this is when they, the FCC did their first tests, way back in 1997. Google began operation, it officially became a company in 1998. So we're talking 21 years ago, Google didn't even exist as a company when the FCC made these rules. Smartphones were just like, you know, smartphones were like a sci-fi dream, uh, you know, Right. That was a long time ago. Now, of course, the FCC says, yeah, yeah, but don't worry, because 2013, we reviewed the standards that we set for safe power level limits in 1997, and we concluded, nah, we don't have to worry about anything. Everything's still perfectly safe. Well, given all the information that's out there, given the, the thousands of studies that any of us can go out and read, including uh, repeated studies, confirmed studies, studies that are actually published on government, U.S. government websites. It's not like, you know, you're going to some some podunk website like some crazy guy is saying this stuff, like, it's all there, all the information is there. And apparently, neither the FCC nor the FDA are actually paying any attention to any of it. So, for example, in 2013, or uh, even more recently, when the FCC and the FDA reconfirm that these things are safe, I imagine that the situation went something like this. Now keep in mind here, I am the head of the FDA. Hello, FDA boss man here. How can I help you? Oh, hi head of the FCC. How are you? Good, good. How's the family? Great. What can I do for you? Ah, <laughs> it's that time again, eh? Got to review the old RF standards, make sure everybody's not going to die. Have we done anything about it? Oh yeah, we've um we've in, we did a 6 month long uh thorough investigation of all the studies we could find, uh, we talked to all the experts, top experts in their fields, and uh, in fact, it's just a few minutes I should be getting the report. Um, can, you, can you hold the line a minute? I can go over and see if the report's ready, and uh, I'll just give you the results right now. Okay. Okay, great. Hold, hold just a second. Oh, hi. Come on in. What have you got for me there? Ooh, that's, uh... So this is for a, a drug trial. Okay. Let me see. Tee Drew... Drew. You know, I tell you what, uh, Brenda, I, um, I'm a very important, very busy man, so why don't you just go ahead and give me the summary of what this report on this new drug says. Okay, it's a new drug. It's called Killium from Bribemore Pharmaceuticals. Very good company. I like it already. Okay, and Killium is uh, an anti-migraine medication. That's, that's very good. We need to help people who have migraines. A hundred, a hundred patients in the study. That's very thorough. Okay, so 97 out of the 100 patients that they tested with the new drug 
97 of them died, and there were 100 total, so how many actually lived? Three. Well, w were those three people actually helped by the medication? They were. Okay, well, I think it's very important. Uh, three people have been helped by this drug, and I like the number three, so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, put my John Hancock on this. There you go. Thanks a lot. And uh, you tell Brymore Pharmaceuticals I send my regards. Okay, thanks. Ooh, right. Uh. Yeah, Tom, sorry for the wait there. Um, it took me a minute to get our official report. I'm actually holding the report in my hand here. Uh, it's about uh, 64 pages long. It's very thorough. And, um, yeah, I can say with uh, absolute certainty that uh, we have not found any danger at all from radio frequency emissions from any devices. Uh, um, it's this, as I say, this is a very thorough report. We spent six months compiling all this information, and it is totally 100% safe. So, okay. Okay, great, Tom. Glad I could help. Bye-bye. Ooh, what a day, what a day. So I guess it went something like that. Also, uh, it's worth keeping in mind that uh, earlier this year, uh, a head honcho, some dude from the FCC, was uh, at uh, like a congressional hearing or something, and uh, the FCC dude was asked, you know, do you guys have any studies showing that 5G is safe? And they said no. And then they were asked, do you know of any studies showing that 5G is safe? And they said no. So they're claiming that something, they have no evidence at all showing that it's safe. There are thousands of studies showing that various types and frequencies of radio waves, 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, blah, 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 all this stuff is actually unsafe. And more studies required to work out exactly, you know, maybe how to fix this. And despite all of that, they just kind of like say, yeah, we don't need to change anything, everything's fine. Furthermore, recently the Chicago Tribune did a study. They hired a lab, I think it was in California, and they tested various smartphones. And what they found in this independent study was that quite a few Samsung and Apple smartphones, including the iPhone 8, iPhone X, and Galaxy S8, exceed federal SAR ratings by quite a bit. Naturally, Apple and Samsung claim, no, 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 we comply with the FCC. The FCC says, no, 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 they comply with our rules, blah, blah, blah. And of course, they kind of declined to comment. So they say that 5G is safe, but they have no evidence to support these claims. Uh, they say that the power levels are, are safe, and yet not only are those power levels something that was measured in 1997, and they used like, you know, 200 plus pound big, you know, hunky soldiers male uh, and they did certain types of testing way back in 1997, 21 years ago. Uh, they didn't consider, like, women, maybe pregnant women. They didn't consider children. Um, several studies have shown that uh, the, especially the heads of children, because they're not fully developed, uh, children are far more susceptible to all this crazy pulsed wireless stuff than are fully grown adult soldier males. But none of that matters, I guess. Um, they also have never taken into account long-term constant exposure. You've got Bluetooth, your Bluetooth keyboard, your Bluetooth mouse, your Wi-Fi is blasting all the time, your neighbor's Wi-Fi is blasting all the time, your cell phone's on all the time, you sleep with your cell phone on next to your head on your, on your nightstand every night, uh, you know, your kids go to school, there's Wi-Fi in the school, like it's everywhere. Uh, they, they don't apparently actually consider any of that, uh, so they just do a quick little test and go, yeah, it's a little bit of exposure, yeah, okay, we don't have to worry about it. Um, furthermore, as I mentioned, you know, today's digital systems, the stuff that we have, the pulse nature of the waves, the modulation schemes they use, the higher frequencies that they use, none of that existed in 1997. And when you look at all these thousands of studies, it's very clear that different frequencies, different modulation schemes, different types of pulsing have different effects. Now, interestingly enough, recently, 
a former head of Microsoft Canada came out and he released a video on YouTube, which I'll also link to in the description. And he also says that, yeah, he spoke out against 5G and he says, yeah, um, basically this is not good. In his opinion, uh, we need to, you know, he mentions, you know, many of the studies that I've mentioned in various videos. And he says, you know, he, he basically says exactly the same thing that I say, which is that uh, it appears to be the pulse nature and there's no reason why we can't actually look at this stuff and try and develop something that is safer. It will require a concerted effort, you know, between everyone. So, you know, all of us who are kind of standing up against this, we're not saying douse everything in gasoline and set it on fire. We're saying, look, you've got all these thousands of studies. They keep coming in more and more. They're confirming each other. Instead of just going back to 1997 and saying, yeah, yeah, everything's fine. Look into it and, you know, everybody shut up for a minute, work together, and find exactly what it is that makes them harmful. And all it requires is enough people to actually uh, be concerned and to get enough sort of critical mass before things start happening. So I was actually very happy to see uh, this former Microsofty come out and actually speak publicly about it because we need more of that. And I have to note that, you know, kind of poked a little fun at the FCC and the FDA, and I know that the FCC and the FDA are not like totally evil institutions. Uh, they do a lot of good things. I mean, like all the drugs that the FDA approves, you know, many of them have helped people, you know, who I love. And so they're not all bad. Neither the FCC nor the FDA are all bad. But on this particular topic, um, I'm just kind of dumbfounded because it's so easy to find the information. And why is it that they won't just go and look at it and do something about it, essentially do their jobs. They may be doing their jobs in other ways, but when it comes to, you know, wireless safety, especially pulsed digitally modulated RF signals, they're not doing their job and um, they should be. So yeah, and as to what to do about it, uh, as I've said before, like I understand that like you can't get away from your neighbor's Wi-Fi, you know, but that doesn't mean that you have to use it. You know, power drops off with the square of the distance. so. If you've got a transmitter right next to your body all the time, that's worse than a transmitter in your neighbor's house next door. Uh, various studies, as I've mentioned before, showed that even like infinitesimally small power levels can have effects. But other studies have showed that the more exposure you have and the more constant exposure you have, also the more damage there is in other ways. So, you know, you don't have to have a smartphone. You don't have to have it on all the time. You don't have to use Wi-Fi. You can uh, watch... Uh, one of my earlier videos about how to wire your house with Ethernet cables. Uh, it's faster, it's more reliable, it's, it's uh, future-proof even. Um, you, don't, you don't have to have a wireless keyboard, you don't have to have a wireless mouse. Like, your children do not have to be carrying around smartphones and tablets all the time and blah blah blah, you know, that doesn't mean they should never be allowed to use one, you know, we're not, you know, just like I don't think the FCC and the FDA is like all pure evil, um, you know, it doesn't have to be a purely black and white thing. So there are very simple things like this that you can do. You minimize your exposure and hopefully if more and more people uh, speak out and become interested in this, read all these studies. Um, many of them you can pretty much read the abstract which will link to other documents. Uh, you don't have to have a PhD to understand what a lot of these things are saying. And uh, hopefully more and more people will become interested in the topic and uh, speak up about it and maybe we can actually get some uh, real collective good research done to actually make these technologies safe because you know I would love to use them too. So yeah I guess that's about it. For more techie tips see scottystech.info. Thanks for watching. See you next time.